In the previous lesson, we talked about the timing of revenue recognition and payments. And we said the main criteria for revenue recognition are 1. If the work is done. And 2. If the seller company receives a valid promise of payment. Okay, we probably simplified a little bit. But that's how we usually determine whether we should recognize revenue from a transaction. It's time to get more technical. We said revenue should be recognized when it is earned, when the goods have been delivered to our client, not necessarily when a payment has been made. That's true, but it is also a simplification of how revenue is recognized in practice. According to the International Financial Reporting Standards, revenue should be recognized when five criteria are met. Risks and rewards have been transferred from the seller to the buyer. The seller has no control over the goods sold. The collection of payment is reasonably assured. The amount of revenue can be reasonably measured. Costs of earning the revenue can be reasonably measured. Okay, the first two conditions are about whether the seller of the goods has delivered all or most of the product or service he has been paid to deliver. If you sell used cars with no warranties and a person comes by, buys one of the cars, and takes off with it, then the first two points are satisfied, and risks and rewards have been transferred from the seller to the buyer. If your company sells brand new cars and issues five-year full-service warranties, then perhaps not all the risks related to the product have been transferred to the buyer. Therefore, some portion of unearned revenue should be left on the liability side of the balance sheet. Point number three. Collection of payment is reasonably assured. If the two parties have agreed to certain payment conditions and there is no reason to believe the buyer would not pay on time, the seller should be able to recognize the sale as revenue. Tricky, right? This means if we are aware of financial difficulties of the buyer or we typically expect that a certain portion of our clients will default, we can't register the entire amount as revenue and should leave a certain provision instead. So if a leasing company sells some of its goods to clients with low income and knows that 60% of them are not likely to pay for the goods they have purchased, then the company can't register the entire amount of goods it sold as revenue. We must be careful with point number three. Okay, we are almost there. Point number four. The amount of revenue can be reasonably measured. That's easier usually, given that we talk about a financial transaction and the amount of money to be paid is pre-established. There can be exceptions, of course, but that's rather rare. And finally, costs of earning the revenue can be reasonably measured. We can only recognize revenue when selling products and services, the costs for which can be reasonably measured. A company must have sustained some form of cost to produce these goods or deliver these services. Right, these are the five revenue recognition criteria according to the International Financial Reporting Standards. Revenue recognition criteria under US GAAP are almost identical. Okay, this will do for now. Thanks for watching.